was not until the 12th or 13th century that the spread of Islam started. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to my channel, my brothers and sisters. So in today's video, I will be doing a reaction video and this is a video I actually wanted to react to before because I'm very curious to know the story behind how Indonesia became a Muslim country because as we know today there are the most Muslims in Indonesia I'm very curious to see how Islam spread in Indonesia so I found this video called how did Indonesia become Muslim so I'm about to watch this video with you all and then I will say what I think okay Bismillah what is the country with the largest Muslim population in the entire world? Indonesia. Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Egypt, or Nigeria? Well, none of them. The correct answer is Indonesia. Indonesia. Islam is the religion in Indonesia with most adherents, with 87.2% of Indonesian population identifying themselves as Muslim in a 2010 survey. Indonesia has the so largest funny. Muslim population in the world with approximately 220 million Muslims. But looking at the world map and knowing that Islam started in Arabia in the 7th century, from where it expanded to more people, especially in continental North Africa and southwestern Asia, a question just popped up. How did Islam reach this archipelago? How did these away islands become Muslim? Muslim conquests following Muhammad's death led to the creation of the Caliphates. These empires expanded quickly and occupied enormous geographical areas. Occupying more and more land, the conversion to Islam was boosted by missionary activities, particularly those of Imams. They told the religious teachings to the local people. Due to the rapid military expansion, the new religion expanded too, and the new conquered territories. These early dynasties focused on spreading the new religion, but also they focused on research, economics, and trading. During the Islamic Golden Age, more and more people converted to this religion, including crowned heads, nobles, but also trades and merchants. This resulted in rapid spreading towards the Indian and Atlantic Ocean. Islam influence first came to be felt in the Indian subcontinent during the early 7th century with the advent of Arab traders. Arab traders mm -hmm. used to visit the Malabar region, which was a link between them and the ports of Southeast Asia to trade even before Islam had been established in Arabia. The Arab merchants and traders became the carriers of the new religion, and they propagated it wherever they went. It was, however, the subsequent expansion of the Muslim conquest in the Indian subcontinent over the next millennia that established Islam in the region. Muslim missionaries played a key role in the spread of Islam in Asia. Some missionaries even assuming roles as merchants. They were sent across Asia in all directions under various titles, often as traders. The missionaries were instructed to speak to their potential converts in their own language. Even before Islam was established amongst Indonesian communities, Muslim sailors and traders had often visited the shores of modern Indonesia. Most of these early sailors and merchants arrived from the Abbasid Caliphate's newly established ports of Basra and Dabal. The territory was rich in spices, exotic fruits, and other goods. Nice. There is evidence of Arab Muslim traders entering Indonesia as early mm -hmm. as the 8th century. But it was not until the 12th or 13th century that the spread of Islam started, then expanded even more due to the adoption by the local rulers and elites. The missionaries came from many territories and regions. Some came here from India, and later from the southern Arabian Peninsula. It is believed that around the 13th century, the religion began to emerge on the northern coast of Sumatra. After this, Islam was further spread by Sufi orders, and finally mm. consolidated by the expansion of the territories of converted rulers and their communities. Not knowing a certain date when the conversion started, and having no clear indication of when Islam first came to the region, 
we may consider the start around 11th or 12th centuries. The first Muslim gravestone markings date to 1082. Also, when Marco Polo visited the area in 1292, he noted that the urban port state of Perlac was Muslim. The first evidence of a Muslim dynasty in the gravestone dated 1297 of Sultan Malik al Saleh, the first Muslim ruler of the Samudra Pasai Sultanate. Chinese sources record the presence of a Muslim delegation to the emperor from the kingdom of Samudra in 1282. The spread of Islam generally followed the trade routes east through the primarily Buddhist region and half a century later in the Malaccas we see the first dynasty arise in the form of the Sultanate of Malacca at the far end of the archipelago formed by the conversion of one Shah into a Muslim and the adoption of the name Muhammad mm -hmm. Iskandar Shah. The spread of Islam among the ruling class was precipitated as Muslim traders married the local women, with some of the wealthier traders marrying into the families of the ruling elite. Indonesian people as local rulers and royalty began to adopt it, and subsequently their subjects mirrored their conversion. The expansion accelerated in the 15th century as the military power of Malacca Sultanate in the Malay Peninsula and other Islamic sultanates dominated the region aided by episodes of Muslim coup, wars and superior control of maritime trading and ultimate markets. By the 14th century, Islam had been established in northeast Malaya, Brunei, the southwestern Philippines, and among some courts of coastal east and central Java. The 15th century saw the decline of Hindu Javanese Majapahit Empire mm. as Muslim traders from Arabia, India, Sumatra, and the Malay Peninsula, and also China began to dominate the regional trade that once controlled the Javanese Majapahit traders. Chinese Ming Dynasty provided systematic support to Malacca. Mm. Ming Chinese Zhang's voyages is credited for creating Chinese Muslim settlement in Palembang and north coast of Java. Malacca actively encouraged the conversion to Islam in the region, while Ming fleet activity established Chinese Malay Muslim community in northeast coastal Java, thus created a permanent opposition to the Hindus of Java. The expeditions had established Muslim Chinese, Arab, and Malay communities in northern ports of Java. Dominant Muslim kingdoms were more and more present in the archipelago. Hindus' historical inhabitants were animists, Hindus, and Buddhists. And in time, many of them accepted the new religion because Muslim merchants and traders disseminated Islamic teachings while trading with local population. And their teachings encouraged proselytizing religion. Hindus and Buddhists don't generally proselytize. And Islam is a monotheistic belief system, and it doesn't allow its followers to believe in another god. Being a Muslim created more privileges, benefits, and favorable terms for the local people than being a non-Muslim. Some people needed safety and certainty, so they chose to declare themselves as Muslims. Because Islam made an appearance in Southeast Asia through trade with people of South Arabia and Indian Sufis, the transition was made more peacefully than in the Middle East or North Africa where existed conflicts. In Indonesia, the process was slower but was created different through merchants, elites, and nobles. The presence of monarchy made it easier for the religion to spread among the commoners, just as the presence of Christianity in the monarchy made it easier for the religion to spread in European kingdoms. Meanwhile, in Java Island, the great Hindu Majapahit Empire was collapsing. Some of these new kingdoms were supported by Ming China through assimilation related to trade, royal conversions and conquest. Islam had supplanted Hinduism and Buddhism as the dominant religion of Java and Sumatra by the end of the 16th century. But many cultural and religious habits from the Hindu-Buddhist era were mostly tolerated and even incorporated into Islamic rituals. Islam didn't obliterate the pre-existing culture. Rather, it incorporated and embedded the local customs and non-Islamic elements among rules. Mm -hmm. In part, the strong presence of Sufism has been considered a major enabler of the syncretism between Islam and other religions. When Europeans came, they brought Christianity to the Muslim majority, 
but not so many converted, probably due to the fact that in that time, already the accent wasn't put on religion as much as in the 12th or 13th centuries. But this is another discussion. Indonesia is a big country, with more than 250 million people from different cultures and ethnicities across thousands of islands. From a religious point of view, Indonesia is not ruled by a single law. Because more than 80% of the population are Muslims, Indonesia can be called as one of the Muslim countries in the world. But Indonesia is not a traditional Islamic one. Their constitution does not specifically base on their religion. And also it contains many values, universal ones, which are also available in Islam, as well as in other religions, formulated into what is known as Pancasila, the five philosophical pillars of the country. We would like to give nice. special thanks again to Curiosity Stream. This was very interesting to learn about the story behind how Indonesia became a majority Muslim country. Alhamdulillah, it was not by war or something like that. I know that people have sometimes wrong ideas about Islam and how it was spread and things like that. As we know in the Quran, it says there is no compulsion in religion. And I completely believe this and I fully believe that that should be the case. I do not believe in forcing people to be Muslim. I completely understand how people can ex accept Islam. There are so many ways where people get introduced to Islam, whether it's from other people or if, for example, like in this story, there were Arab traders who introduced Islam to them. Alhamdulillah. But at the end of the day, it is Allah who guides. That is the only one we should really thank to be Muslim. We should just thank Allah, thank Allah to make us a Muslim because there is no one else who really has the power to make someone Muslim. Like, it's not up to anyone to do that. It's Allah who does it and it is up to the people. Like, it's up to the people whether they are open to learn or whether they are just closed or it depends on their mindset. Everyone has free will. Everyone has brain. You know, God gave us brain to think think clearly if someone like doesn't believe in god and if he has all these signs if he has all these sources where you can look and read and learn but at the end of the day it's up to you if you choose to not believe then you can't blame god for that you can't <laughs> it's not god's fault now i'm just like starting to talk about something else but <laughs> anyway Alhamdulillah, Indonesia was meant to be like a Muslim country. At the same time, I feel like Indonesia, there are people who are good people there and they live with each other, with other religions. There are not only Muslims there, there are other religions and they all live peacefully. Obviously, maybe there are some disagreements and it's normal. Even if you take religion aside, People will still have disagreements. That's just how people are. It's not only about religion. But at the end of the day, Islam does teach us to respect everyone. Alhamdulillah. It does make me happy to know that Indonesia is Muslim majority country. And Alhamdulillah for learning the story. I would actually love to visit Indonesia and Malaysia. They are I think pretty similar countries. I think it would be very nice to visit those countries, inshallah. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in my next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.